माता जी दंडवत प्रणाम जय शिला प्रभु का उट रागात्मिका भक्ति रागानुगा भक्ति एंड भावा भक्ति एंड प्रेमा भक्ति आई थिंक दैट टॉपिक इज वेरी एसोटेरिक फॉर दिस डिस्कशन so one thought came is should we read bhagavata yeah sure prabhu ji like whatever you decide prabhu ji because i remember mm-hmm. like even in our group when we did earlier many said that they could not understand so when they cannot understand i am not sure how we will be able to take this subject at all yeah understand prabhu ji भक्ति शास्त्री वी विल डिस्कस बिकॉज एनी वेज दे विल बी पार्ट ऑफ अवर कोर्स एंड एग्जाम सो दैट टाइम वी हैव टू कवर कैन यू थिंक ऑफ एनी अदर टॉपिक अदर देन भागवतम और यू थिंक भागवतम इज बेस्ट या भागवतम इज बेस्ट प्रभु जी देखो आपके वर्ड यू सी इज एंड आई थिंक वी ऑलरेडी कवर्ड अ First eight chapters, right? Or Bhagavatam? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, Prabhu Ji. First eight chapters. So should we start with Bhishma Dev passing away? Maybe whatever you think, Prabhu Ji. Or like, if you would like to check with the other devotees, can you say it again? Um, whatever you decide, Prabhu Ji. Like, if you think, like, we can start from Bhishma Dev. प्रभुजी If you think that is helpful for us, oh, that's an option. To get like more inspiration, like for, huh? yeah, to get like more uh, inspiration and enthusiasm, like while discussing. Um, mm-hmm. That's an option. ओके सो नंदर प्रणाम प्रभु जी जन माता जी और गुरु शिला प्रभुपाद वी हैव अ स्मॉल डिस्कशन विद ऑल ऑफ यू कैन यू ऑल हियर मी रागात्मिका भक्ति एंड रागानुगा भक्ति दैट सब्जेक्ट मैटर इज क्वाइट एसोटेरिक एंड आई एम थिंकिंग टू टेक दैट सब्जेक्ट मैटर इन अवर भक्ति शास्त्र डायरेक्टली एंड आई एम श्योर दैट i think all of you are part of bhakti shastri so that's where we will be covering those last five chapters just because the content is too intense of that chapter so now we are thinking for this group <clears throat> either we move to bhagavatam and we'll discuss some stories from bhagavatam basically we go verse by verse that is one option or does any one of you have any suggestions or any inspirations any desires
Anybody would like to give their inputs? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, Hare Krishna. Uh, Prabhuji, I, I don't know if um, everybody um, knows about it, but I would like to know um, completely Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya Prabhuji. I mean, I would like to know um, what Sampradaya we are following and how it has, uh, like, you know, from from the, I mean, we have already learned it, but as a summary, probably, um, if you can uh, tell us about all the, um, uh, uh, I mean, lineage kind of uh, from 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 the beginning and uh, all the um, all of them like to know actually to, from from um, uh, Madhva Sampradaya how it has come to um, this um, uh, Srila Prabhupada if at all mm -hmm. it helps others also very yeah i understood uh, mainly we don't speak much because not much in not much is known before madhvendra puri we know the names they are there in bhagavad gita but from madhvendra puri there is a uh, much more understanding of madhvendra puri then lord chaitanya then six goswamis then um shrivasacharya narottamdas thakur then um, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and then Jagadar Babaji Maharaj and then there is um, um, Gaur Kishodar Babaji Bhakti Vinod Thakur Gaur Kishodar Babaji Maharaj Saraswati Thakur and Chilak Babuzad so there is a good amount of understanding of from Madhvendra Puri before that Chilak Prabhupada does mention about how Vyasadev disciple was uh, Madhvacharya um, and then Madhvacharya then there are few names we don't know much about them so if you want we can discuss personalities from Madhvendra Puri onwards one possibility yeah Prabhuji okay Prabhuji you know let's finish. let's see what others uh, uh, would would say Does anyone have Hare any suggestion? Yes, Shini was Prabhuji, uh, you are asking about uh, next further classes or today, Prabhu? Prabhuji. Today onwards. So, Prabhu, today I was onwards. sharing like because uh, we have covered all the chapters except Daganuga Bhakti, which okay. the topic is esoteric, and we will be covering that in our Bhakti Shastri. So, that's why I am thinking to switch gears from here itself. Okay. Uh, how about Bhagavatam Prabhuji? Is it uh, repetitive? Uh, did we cover all the cantos anytime? <laughs> <in this topic? laughs> that will take a lifetime, Prabhu, in this discussion to come. I mean, it may not be that. sloka by sloka, Prabhu. Uh, maybe chapter by chapter summary or uh, can some understand. Uh, mm. Yeah. I mean, one I mean, option. Even if uh, over you also, like uh, huh? chapter Say or again? canto. Even if it is over you by, cha uh, by chapter or by canto. Uh, based on your previous experience, how you used to deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are many ways to approach Bhagavatam. One way is we go verse by verse with the purport. It's a little slow, more deeper. One way is we go verse by verse in each chapter. And one way is we go just one verse in a chapter and summarize the chapter and just discuss one verse with translation purport. That's how um, we have done in many um, Krishna houses around. Is one verse in a chapter, summarize the chapter and go one verse in detail. That gives us a connectivity of various chapters. Another way we have read Bhagavatam is uh, um, by taking some jewels from Bhagavatam in detail, like Dhruv Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, Ambarish Maharaj. Take those and dive into the jivani of their 
Yeah, their pure devotion. What do you feel? Uh, yes, Prabhuji, if everybody one else is okay. I mean, usually we we hear more about 10th canto, uh, 7th canto, like that. Some highlights only we hear. But uh, if somebody asks suddenly, like, what does this canto is famous for? What does this canto is famous for? If we have at least for, for 12 cantos, if we know something about each canto, this is this mm -hmm. this is what each canto highlights. This is the essence of this canto, like that. That will be helpful. I mean, hope mm -hmm. that will not be too much yeah. of a rework from your side. On your no, side. I can certainly do that. I mean, somehow I have special interest. Um, <clears throat> um some special interest uh, in Bhagavata myself also, just because this Purana Mala. Um, the best among the best of the best of the best of the Vedic literatures. Um, okay, uh, I heard your uh, views, Prabhu. Let's see what others would like to discuss in this forum. I would like to hear in this forum. More devotees would like to give their comments on what would please them. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, then with Panam. Jay Shila Prabhupada. Yeah, yeah, I was listening to you, Prabhuji. Yeah. <clears throat> I am fine. Like, uh, I would be interested to hear uh, more, more prominent pastimes in Bhagavatam as well. Or or any approach you take in Bhagavatam, I am fine. Like, uh, I would be glad, Prabhuji. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Amol Prabhu, you have some some desires. Okay, I'm also okay with the, anything, but <clears throat> Bhagavatam, if you give overview, that will be also helpful. Overview Bhagavatam, you would like. Yeah. Hmm. Radha Bhavani Mataji, you have certain desires. Yes, Prabhuji, I have one desire, Prabhuji. Sister, Prabhuji, we don't heard about too much for the Bhagavatam, for all the cantos. So I want to be really interested about, uh, you know, chapter on chapter, canto on canto with the Bhagavatam. Wh which way you have to be? Okay, so then I am interested to the Bhagavatam, Prabhuji. You mean uh, understanding of overview of Bhagavatam? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, 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 Prabhuji. Yes. And uh, not necessarily verse by verse. No, Prabhuji, because it's too much, uh, too big for you and then take time. So then we have to be, you know, Prabhu, first canto is like this way. These things are important. Why the, you know, this chapter is important. Why is this verse are important? So that's why I'm interested about the And even Prabhuji, even verse by verse, it's taking long time. And then I am that way, okay, too. But yeah, Prabhuji, it's a Bhagavad yeah. Gita. I, I understood, like, the main interest is that we want to have a feel of Bhagavatam. Yes, Prabhupada. Mm, that's a, okay. okay, it's excellent. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Danwar Pranam Prabhuji. Uh, all Stuti, so nice Prabhuji in uh, Bhagavatam, Brahmadev Stuti, Indra Stuti, and uh, Kunti Stuti, Kunti Devi Prayas. Hmm. So you are saying you want to hear the prayers of different devotees in Bhagavatam? Yes, Prabhuji. That is more helpful. Mm -hmm. The prayers. Yes, okay. Prabhuji. Thank you. I heard it. Let's see who else. Anantri Prabhu, do you have some desires, Prabhuji? Dhanvat Pranam, Prabhuji. And, uh, I certainly uh, uh, request for uh, uh, anything related to Bhagavatam Prabhuji 
but i felt that idea of jewels of bhagavatam is a good idea probably to start with and later on we can move to canto wise summary uh, but we can start with initial like uh, some uh, some stories along with the messages prabhu ji like uh, the the realizations of our seniors like our acharyas our gurus on that uh, like many times we hear stories but we miss the subtle messages behind the story so detailed uh, jewels and then the messages behind that and the learnings for us that's my submission prabhu ji Mm, that's also good. Good option. Okay, for me. Thank you. Ah, uh, let's see. Harleen Mataji, do you have some desires? Do you want to say something? Um, Dhanwad Pranam, Prabhu Ji. Dhanwad Pranam. Um, I just want to go chapter by chapter. I just um finished Tatva Bodh. Um, it's a, like a pre Veda thing. and then i have to start third canto and i know it takes a lot of time reading everything but if not chapter by chapter at least like five or 10 chapters together and probably a overview of those 10 chapters which are connected to each other and let's say the 11th chapter is a new chapter with a new thing going on then we can have 11 to 20 chapters together that way we are like doing section by section but we also have an a deeper understanding but then we're not going too deep as well if it makes sense mm, yeah okay yeah mata ji thank you i think most devotees have a similar desire to get a, a deeper clarity of bhagavatam yet not too slow to get an understanding like to get a grasp of various cantos instead of uh, staying on one chapter for months something like that okay thank you um let's see ramya mata ji Do you have some desires? Prabhu, Prabhu ji, Bhagavatam is my favorite book. You like Bhagavatam? Yes, Prabhu. And do you want it like some over... stories, like anything? Like we have some stories right in Bhagavatam. We have all the stories in Bhagavatam. <laughs> yeah, Druva story, like that, Prabhu. Mm. Yeah, yeah, understood. Okay, uh, okay. Thank you all very much. So now I'm thinking, where do we begin? So what we will do is, uh, for the sake of keeping everyone together, we do have some jewels in Bhagavatam, um, that we can cover as we reach those uh, particular stages. and we can start with the uh, um a bhagavatam overview and see i don't know this is the first time i'll be doing that because most of the time the studies that i personally have undertaken are uh, a particular smaller sections of bhagavatam but i think this will be very nice to um have a clarity of overview so i'll think more on this how do we present it but i have taken that so what do we do today then uh, let us see <clears throat> now how how many of you did shrimad bhagavatam first eighth chapter with us or how many of you did not do first eight chapter with us i am asking because should we start from the beginning of bhagavatam or uh, um we have covered eight chapters so should we start from the ninth chapter yeah so probably i did not do any chapter so if, if most of the people are already done then we can start with ninth chapter mm okay so what i can do is uh, let me share the screen gaish prabhu hari krishna i spoke to all of them that's why i am asking okay <laughs> prabhu ji so uh, gaish prabhu have you heard about shrimad bhagavatam yes you have taught us i think last year few chapters yes okay and it doesn't hurt if uh, to go again if no if anybody if nobody minds it it adds 
you mean it it helps to go back again yes it helps mm, yeah okay i understand okay grish prabhu thank you i i heard you so this is the first canto now so let's see we depend on krishna <laughs> we try to depend on krishna so we will see how it goes mm. all right so welcome to shrimad bhagavatam om agyanti mirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri guruve namaha shri chaitanya mano bhishtam sthapitam yena bhutale swarnirupa kadamam dadati swa padantikam vandeham shri guru shri yuta padakamalam shri guru vaishnavamsha shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana ragunathanvitam tam sajivam साधवैतम सावदूतम परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्व भानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंश कल्प तरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु एव पतिता पावने वैष्णवेद नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधर श्री वासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगुंगा ते गिरी यम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर so first of all we will try to say something about shrimad bhagavatam as an introduction shrimad bhagavatam is described as purana amalam it is said uh, among all the vedic scriptures shrimad bhagavatam is the topmost um there are 18 puranas among them six are in um mode of ignorance six in mode of passion five in mode of goodness and one is transcendental and that one is shrimad bhagavatam shrimad bhagavatam does not deal with anything else other than pure devotional service shrimad bhagavatam is said when krishna left this planet krishna appeared again in the form of shrimad bhagavatam shrimad it is said uh, there are there are two incarnations of krishna Uh, in this age of kali and one is the holy name and one is shrimad bhagavatam and both are worshipable um shila prabhupad also mentions that every devotee should have a set of shrimad bhagavatam in their home shrimad bhagavatam is spoken multiple times um over the history shrimad bhagavatam exist even before vyasa dev wrote it shrimad bhagavatam is found in the heavenly planet shrimad bhagavatam is eternally always there it is a purest form just like it is said just as uh, um among all the devotees shiva is the best likewise among all the scriptures shrimad bhagavatam is the best now uh, <clears throat> one interaction um that it begins with like the first chapter we see the questions by the sages the beginning ones will be little more quick we will not do presentations on it it will be more spontaneous um, but we will do some important verses from uh, various chapters but today is basically today I'm, i will try to summarize a few of them shrimad bhagavatam was uh, beginning it was spoken by it begins with a conversation between suta goswami and the sages so how it goes back into the lineage uh, parikshit maharaj was cursed to die in 7 days he was the king he was the grandson of arjuna he was taking care of the entire kingdom he left the home he went to on the bank of ganges and he sat down unsure of what is the duty of a man who is about to die in 7 days mm. the various sages from heavenly planets and from like above earth planet there is bhur lok there is swarg lok then there is uh, um 
Mahalok, Janalok, Tapalok, Satyalok. These are the planets above. The then there are there are lower planets. In Swarglok, there are demigods. Above that, Mahalok, Janalok, Tapalok, Satyalok. Basically, they are sages. And there are no homes there, no cars there. There are uh, it's all forest. Everybody is trying to meditate on the Lord. Uh, great sages, those who are like attain some kind of perfection yoga practices, go to higher four planets. All the four planets above, they are not annihilated um, during partial devastation. Partial devastation happens after every day of Brahma. After every day of Brahma, when the Brahma night comes, up to Swarglok, everything is destroyed. Upper four planets remains. Um, the life duration of higher four planets is same as life of Brahma. So that is like uh, 411, 311 trillion, 40 billion years. It's like 100 days of Brahma. One day of Brahma is, you know, we know a thousand uh, yoga cycles together. Very, very long life. That's why we see um, they are most of, many of them are either sons of Brahma, grandsons of Brahma, or to a great extent, perfected souls who have attained those higher planets. They have many mystical powers. One of the example of mystical powers of beings residing in higher planets is Anantashish is an expansion of Balaram. He is in the form of a snake. Um, he is holding various universes on his hoods like a mustard seed. That's that much humongous he is. So it is also mentioned he is constantly glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam. When these sages from higher planets, when they hear, when they come to know that Anantashesh is glorifying the Lord, is speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, they, through the medium of Ganges, they take a dip, dip in the Ganga and then they appear at the lowest planet because Ganga goes all the way from the higher planets from Brahma Lok all the way to hellish planets Ganga flows throughout there is a description in ninth canto on this when we go there and if Krishna allows us to go so long let's see <clears throat> there there is a description of how Ganga flows through all the planets so they take shelter of Ganga and they can emerge from um, they can emerge from um, lower planets and hear Bhagavatam from and um, they and over there, higher four planets, there are gurus and they have their own thousands of disciples. Um, great austerities. It is said that four Kumaras, those who have heard uh, Sanatan, Sunandan, Sanat Kumar, um, and Sanaka, Sanaka, Sanatan, Sunandan, Sanat Kumar, they all um, live in Tapalok. Uh, sorry. Uh, Maharlok, Janalok, yeah, Tapalok, Satyalok. They live in Tapalok. We see there are sages like Vishwamitra Muni, Vashishta, um, um, Bhrigu Muni. And we see they were there during the time of Lord Ram, the time of Lord Krishna. Uh, and they were there during Sati Yoga also. So they are always there. Why? Because they are there since the beginning of Brahma only. And they will remain there forever till, till Brahma disappears. So these sages have like infinitely long life. Um, so when Maharaj Parikshit came to the bank of Ganges, they knew all the sages that Maharaj Parikshit is pure devotee. Why? Because grandfather and all the Pandavas were um, um, pure devotees of Krishna. Krishna personally dealt with them like their own friends. So they all, through the medium of Ganges, they all appeared through the Ganga to be with Marat Parikshit in the last in the last seven days. But it is also mentioned that all those sages are not pure devotees of Krishna. There are all different mixed kind of spiritualists. Some are yogis only. Some, um, you know, they are all spiritual practitioners, but not on the same page. And that's why Sukhadev Goswami had a little difficult time to speak about uh, Krishna's intimate pastimes in 10th canto to all of them because they had many 
uh, eyebrows raised and questions raised because there are there are just practitioners, yogis. Some of them are devotees. Some understand Krishna. Some don't understand because Krishna is the most subject esoteric matter. So they all came, wanted to be with Maharaj Parikshit at the time of death. At that point of time, Maharaj Parikshit inquired from all of them. Among them, Vyasadeva was there, Narad Muni was there, um, and the Saptarishis, Angira Rishi, Vashishta Rishi, Vigumuni, Vishwamitra, um, and Matanga Rishi, and there were many others. All of them were present there. <clears throat> so, um, as Parikshit Maharaj inquired from everyone, um, what is the duty of a man who is about to die in seven days? Nobody said anything. Um, at that point of time, Sukadev Goswami, who was only a teenager, he entered. And um, he is the son of Vyasadeva. When all the sages on the bank of Ganga, eager to hear the glories of the Lord, when they saw Sukadev Goswami entered, spontaneously they bowed down. Even Vyasadev and Narad Muni, even sages like them bowed down to Sukadev Goswami. So Sukadev Goswami stood in a high seat. Uh, Sukadev Goswami, self-realized soul, he is, it is mentioned in the scriptures that he is a personal parrot of Srimati Radha Rani. And being a personal parrot of Srimati Radha Rani, during Krishna's pastimes, he witnessed all kinds of pastimes. Whether it is with cowherd boys, whether it is the cowherd girls, whether it is Yashoda and Nanda, or whatever, however Krishna acted in this world, um, whether in Mathura or Dwarka or Vrindavan, everything Sukadev Goswami personally witnessed. And he is an eternal associate, ever liberated soul. Um, so, everybody could understand the very, very exalted spiritual position of Sukadev Goswami. And they all spontaneously bowed down. Maharaj Parikh, with all humility, accepted Sukadev Goswami as a spiritual master and begged him to um, tell us about the duty of a man who is about to die in seven days. He told him that I have been cursed and this is the time I have now. How can I best use my time? And based on um, that question, Shiman Bhagavatam was spoken. Now, Srimad Bhagavatam was first spoken by Vyasadeva to Sukadev Goswami. Although Sukadev Goswami is a personal witnesser of the various pastimes of the Lord and completely self-realized soul, yet first he heard Srimad Bhagavatam from Vyasadeva. And after hearing, because uh, Vyasadeva, devotion is very high. So, sorry, Sukadev Goswami, devotion is very high. So, Vyasadeva, his father, who first spoke Bhagavatam, himself heard Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukadeva Goswami when Sukadeva was speaking. So first, Vyasadeva spoke to Sukadeva Goswami. Then Sukadeva Goswami spoke to Maharaj Parikshit along with, in the audience, there were Narad Muni, there was Vyasadeva, and there were 60,000 sages who were there. And it is said in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, just like a fruit becomes sweeter when touched by the lips of a parrot, likewise Sukha means parrot because he is parrot of Srimati Radha Rani. Srimad Bhagavatam, which was originally spoken by Vyasadeva to Sukhadeva, became even sweeter when it was spoken from the lips of Sukhadeva Goswami. So Vyasadeva actually wrote the version that he heard from his own son. Because uh, Sukadeva Goswami's own ecstasies and personal realizations of what he witnessed came forth from his mouth and became very, very sweet. How sweet is Bhagavatam is very much dependent upon the realizations of the speaker also. Um, the best is that Srimad Bhagavatam should be heard um, in association of devotees. Then we can actually relish uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So this, this was the situation. Then um, one of the members who was sitting in the audience along with 60,000 sages, one of them was Sutta Goswami. So all of them, 60,000 sages, they accepted Sukadev Goswami as their spiritual master. 
So later on, Sutta Goswami came to a place called Nemisharanya. After Bhagavatam was over, after seven days, Parikshit Maharaj departed. Parikshit Maharaj departed um, and went to the spiritual world, Vakunta planets. Then Sutta Goswami came to Nemisharanya. And then Sutta Goswami... Can we move? Yeah. Thank you. Then uh, Sutta Goswami came to Nemesharanya and they were another set of thousands of sages in Nemesharanya. This is like uh, third Bhagavatam spoken. First is Vyasadev to Sukadev, then Sukadev to Maharaj Parikshit, and now Sutta Goswami to the sages of Nemesharanya. So actually, Bhagavatam begins by. Um, the questions asked by the sages of Nameshwarana to Sutta Goswami. And first chapter deals with the six questions asked. And the summary of six questions are uh, um, we, the, what is good for all living entities? What is ultimately good for all living entities? Then uh, please tell us about the glories of the Lord and all his incarnations. So there were questions like this. <clears throat> glories of the Lord, glories of the incarnations of the Lord. Um, <clears throat> okay, anyways. And I can um, read all the six questions to us next week. But there were many questions asked, six questions asked. Um, a devotee should be interested in hearing the glories of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then we become very dear to the Lord. And a devotee should be interested in, in hearing glories of all the incarnations of the Lord also. So, uh, because this question was there, Srimad Bhagavatam contains the glories of all the incarnations. Contains about Lord Ram, Matsya, Vamana, Narasimha um, and uh, Buddha, Kalki, and of course Kali Yoga is there. So, Srimad Bhagavatam contains not only about Krishna, but all different incarnations of Krishna also. So, there are these uh, uh, first chapter is basically these questions asked. And what we will do is we will read one verse from the first chapter. You see, I have a list of <clears throat> important verses. We can follow this course curriculum. Wow. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anyone has any question based on the summary so far? Is everyone clear on that aspect? Yes. Yes. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. First verse is actually one of the most important verses of Bhagavatam. I'll try to explain very short because, um, yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Janmadiyasya yato nevad ite ta chatesha bhigyaswara te ne brahma hide adi kavaye mu yati yat suraya te jo vari medam yata viri mayo yatrati sargo nisha dhamna svena sada nirashta kuhakam satyam paramati mahi. So it begins with uh, like just before composing Srimad Bhagavatam. Vyasadeva also wrote Vedanta Sutra. 
so vedanta sutra basically um summary of the vedas and vedanta sutra um does not specifically mention the name of god and that's why there is a lot of confusion um <clears throat> but the first verse of vedanta begin with janmadi asayata that is the first verse of vedanta janmadi asayata mean janma means creation and adi means creation maintenance and destruction so janmadi asayata means he is the source that supreme personality of godhead he is the source of creation maintenance and destruction so a lot of confusion. Some say God is Brahman. Different people have different perspective. So Vyasadeva understanding how the Vedanta Sutras can be misrepresented. He himself wrote a commentary on Vedanta. And that commentary on Vedanta is Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srimad Bhagavatam also began the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. First verse of Vedanta Sutra. See, Sutra means concise. Like one of the Sutra Seventh Sutra or Vedanta Sutra says, Ananda Mevabhyasa, the living entity is pleasure seeker. The first one, the first one, and the second one is actually, first one is actually Athato Brahma Jigyasa. Now you inquire into the Absolute. Then who is the Absolute? The second Sutra says, Janmadi Asayata. He is the source of creation, maintenance, and destruction. Then seventh one says, And the living entity is pleasure seeker. So in that way, very, very succinct. Practically, the whole Vedanta Sutra can be can be written in just in one page. And because it is so succinct, that gives us scope to a lot of misinterpretation to that. And Vyasadeva is seeing that how this can be very widely misinterpreted. He himself wrote a commentary. And in his commentary, the first thing that Bhagavatam begins with is by saying, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Hey, living entities, O oh, all the living entities, O oh, all the jivas, O oh, all the readers of Bhagavatam. If you have come to study the Amala Puran, the best among all the scriptures, first understand who Bhagavan is. And he says he is the son of Vasudev. Vasudev is son of Vasudev. And that is Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. I offer my obeisances to Bhagavan who is Vasudev. Because even this is not clarified in Vedanta Sutra. And then Vyasadeva begins by saying, He is the source of creation, maintenance, and destruction. Anvayat Itiritash Chatvishwar means he is uh, um, directly or indirectly a big Swarat, directly, indirectly, he is conscious of everything. This Vasudev is Krishna. First, this is glorifying Krishna and Bhagavatam. So it says directly, indi directly, indirectly, Krishna is conscious of everything. Um, in his Paramatma feature, he is in the heart of all living entities. In his Brahman feature, he is in every uh, atom. And as Bhagavan feature, he is pervading all the spiritual planets. And also in his Brahman feature, he is um, pervading the Brahma Jyoti. So whether it is a material world, whether it is the Brahma Jyoti, whether it is the Vaikuntha planet, Krishna is directly, indirectly conscious of everything. He is the source of creation, maintenance and destruction and he is fully conscious. And Abhigya Swarat means he is completely independent. Whatever he wants, he can do. We see that uh, when we discuss in detail, we see that even Lord Shiva is not fully independent. Brahma is not fully independent. Nobody is fully independent. Krishna killed the devotees of Lord Shiva like Ravana and others or devotees of Brahma like Hrnakashipu. But nobody can touch the devotees of Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna personally comes to protect his devotees. Lord Shiva took a vow that I will protect Banasur. Whenever Banasur will fight, he has a thousand hands. I am going to protect. Then Banasur challenged Krishna when Krishna was in Dwarka. 
Krishna smiled. Then Bana saw because he got a benediction from Lord Shiva that he will protect him. So Bana should call for Lord Shiva. Now Lord Shiva was in trouble. Lord Shiva internally prayed to Krishna, Krishna, now I have given this benediction. One of the quality of Lord Shiva is he is uh, very easily pleased. So he became pleased with the austerity of Banasur. Banasur said, you know, you will fight on my behalf. So Lord Shiva says, all right. Parvati Devi asked Lord Shiva, sir, why did you give such benediction? Such benediction will put you in trouble. Lord Shiva said, you know, I don't understand how these things will happen. Then Parvati, Lord Shiva, ki, you are very bhola. You are bholinath. Masumu up. You don't understand what all troubles will come to you because you easily become pleased, you give benediction and then see. Then you get into the trouble. So then trouble came as expected. As Parvati Devi predicted, trouble came. And Banasur called for Shiva. And now Shiva is to fight against Krishna. <laughs> so Lord Shiva asked Krishna, hey Krishna, now what do I do? Krishna says that, uh, uh, see, you have to do your karma. Because uh, now you have given the benediction and your words cannot go false because whatever my devotees say happens. You declare Arjuna. Why you declare? Because the devotee words never go false. Whatever benediction or curses the devotees give always happens. Whatever Lord Shiva speaks, whatever uh, any saintly person speaks, whatever Narad Muni blessings or curses curses he gives whatever these pure saints whatever they speaks will happen this is like krishna make sure it happens so krishna is lord shiva that now you have given your words uh, so now you cannot go back onto them so you have to fight with me so lord shiva says uh, krishna but how is it possible how can i fight with you krishna says i will handle don't worry you fight there was a fighting <laughs> between krishna and shiva then Krishna released, this is one of the book called Bhakta Mala, it says, Krishna released the arrow and Lord Shiva goes into constant yawning. <sighs> so, so after fighting, Krishna released an arrow and Lord Shiva kind of like sleepy. And now he cannot fight. And uh, then Banasur told Lord Shiva, you have to fight on my behalf. And Lord Shiva is unconscious, constantly yawning and sleeping. And then Krishna killed Banasur. And then Lord Shiva came back to normal state. And uh, <laughs> then he told Krishna, to Krishna, thank you for saving me from this situation. So Krishna always comes to protect his devotees. So it is said that he is Abhigya Swarat. In, if Indra want to make an independent decision, he was humbled by Krishna. Brahma wanted to test Krishna, he was humbled by Krishna. Whatever they want doesn't matter. What Krishna wants matters. That's why Vyasadeva is telling, hey, listen, this, this Bhagavan, whose name is Vasudev, he is Abhigyaswara, completely independent. Tene Brahma Hide Adi Kavaye, and he is the one from whom the Vedic literature emanates. That's why it is described where, where Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam begins. Bhagavad Gita ends by saying, Sarva Dharma Parityaja Ma Mekam Sharan Brahma. Please abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. And Bhagavatam begins by I offer my obeisances to Bhagavan who is Vasudeva who is Krishna. So Tene Brahma Hridaya Adi Kavaye and he is the one who spoke the Vedic literature in the heart of Brahma. Krishna himself says in Bhagavad this is also where Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam coincides. The, and we see Bhagavatam say, Bhagavad Gita says, Krishna says, I am the compiler of the Vedas. 15, chapter 15th word he says. Um, Vedanta Krid Veda Videva Chaha. Vedanta Krid means, Vedanta Krid means, I compiled all the Vedas. Compiler means, I spoke the Vedas. Vedanta Vid, I am the knower of the Vedas. So, uh, same thing. He's the compiler. And because he's the compiler, he was the first person who spoke the Vedas in the heart of Brahma. Tene Brahma Hilde Adi Kavaye. 
um, that also it have, that also confirms the position of Vasudev Krishna over Brahma. Some people say that uh, Vishnu Brahma Mahesh same. No, nowhere in scriptures it says they are same. Rather very clearly, Shrimad Bhagavatam says that Krishna gave enlightenment to Brahma by speaking Vedas. So he is the guru of Brahma. So tene Brahma hirda means heart. Adi kavaye. Kavaye means spoken. Muyanti yad suraya. Suraya means the great sages and demigods. And muyanti means illusion. And then now there is a description of the illusory energy of Vasudev is so strong that even sages and demigods go into illusion. There is an example of Indra could not understand Krishna's position. Brahma could not understand Krishna's position. And then they were humbled. Uh, many sages, they also, even if one becomes a pure devotee, they can be covered by the illusory energy of the Lord. One of the examples is how Lord Shiva was also illusioned by the female form of Lord Vishnu, which is Mohini Murti. And then to such an extent that you know, Shiva lost control by seeing that form. He told uh, uh, Sankarshan that uh, I know you bewildered all the demigods, you bewildered all the demons, and you took the nectar that was produced from the churning of milk ocean. By trickery, you bewildered them and you gave the nectar to all the demigods. I want to see that beautiful woman features of yours. So Narayan says, Shivji, you know, your wife is also there, Parvati. There are so many devotees of yours here. I don't think it's a good idea. Lord Shiva said, please, I really want to see that form of yours. And then the Lord disappeared and the Lord appeared as the Mohini Murti form and Lord Shiva could not tolerate. She was playing with the ball, wearing very thin cloth and very perfectly figured. And when she put the ball and tried to catch the ball, Lord Shiva became like, Lord Shiva could not understand, could not control. Lord Shiva is actually expansion of Narayan. What he wanted to show that how I can take any position to glorify my Lord. So then Lord Shiva, then she started running and Lord Shiva started running behind her. And Parvati like stuck with wonder what happened to my husband. All the sages, they were like followers of Lord Shiva and very renounced. Pakka renounced, renounced. And they are saying that our leader is fully renounced. Lord Shiva can never be agitated. One time, Kam Dev wanted to influence Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva, by his glance, burned Kam Dev into ashes. Kam Dev lost his cross body. Kam Dev is cupid. His wife's name is Rati. She was like, you know. What do I do? My husband only a subtle body now. My husband has become a ghostly figure now. Later on, by the mercy of Krishna, this ghostly figure came back as Krishna's grandson named Anirudh. And he got married to Rati again. So nobody can agitate Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva can keep Parvati on his lap and speak on renunciation to Mara Chitraketu. Lord Shiva has absolutely no attachments. But Lord Shiva was still attracted to the Mohini Murti form of Lord Vishnu. Parvati Devi could not believe. She like, you know, this is impossible. But it is said that this was not Mahamaya. This was Yoga Maya. Because it's form of the Lord. But yet, illusion was there. So it is said, Muyati Yat Suraya. The Lord's Maya potency. First, he is the source of creation, maintenance, destruction. He is completely independent. He was the one who spoke Srimad Bhagavatam into the heart of Brahma. And uh, even the sages and greatest of them among demigods are also illusioned by the illusory energy of the Lord. 
and what are the features of illusory energy of the Lord? Tejo vari, tejo vari medam yatha vinimayo yatra tisargo mrisa. Three sargo, it is made of the three forms. Mode of passion, mode of goodness, mode of ignorance. Three sargo mrisa. And tejo vari medam yatha vinimayo means just like sometimes it seems there is there is land in the ocean and sometimes it feels there is water in the fire. It feels like that because it's very shiny, the fire. So it seems like there is water in between the fire, but there is no water. It seems like there is shore in the water. There is a shisha, there is a land there, but there is no land. It's just ocean. seems like there is a shore. There is an island there. It's not there. So just like it feels like that, these three modes of material nature, it is unreal. Mrisa means it is unreal. It is illusory. It seems like that, but it is not there. But then the last verse says, Dham no svena sada nirashta kohakam satyam paramadimahi. Satyam paramadimahi, Jiva Goswami says about this word, he says satyam paramadimahi, dhimahi. Those who know the Gaitri mantra, dhimahi, means Gayatri Mantra. Wherever the Mahi comes, those who know the normal Gayatri Mantra, Om Pur Bhavaswaha, the word the Mahi comes. It is said that three words together in a mantra make it Gayatri. And this the Mahi makes it the Gayatri of Bhagavata. But because Gayatri Mantra is meant to be heard only by doubly or duly initiated devotees, Vyasadev did not give Gayatri Mantra, Gayatri Mantra openly. But by the word Dimahi, he is, he is making it very esoteric. Everyone can read, yet it is very esoteric. And Dhamna Svena Sada Nirashta Kuhaka means Dhamna Svena means the abode of the Lord. Sada Nirashta Kuhaka. Nirashta Kuhaka means again illusory, illusion energy. Nirashta, sada nirashta kuhaka means it's always free from illusion. This word is illusory. Just like water seen on land or like land, land seen on water, this word is illusory. It is covered by the three modes of material nature, but the abode of the Lord, dhamna svena sada nirashta kuhaka, abode of the Lord is always free from the illusory energy. Satyam Paramadimahi, he is the supreme absolute truth. Sometimes we will see in Bhagavatam, even Narad Muni is referred to as Bhagavan. And there are even great sages like Kardava Muni is also referred to as Bhagavan. Bhagavan means great personalities. Bhagavan can be used multiple times. Just like in our tradition also, we call everyone Prabhu. Prabhu means master. But in India, commonly, we call Prabhu only to Bhagwan or God. Or oh, Tamare Prabhu. Hai. But here we call everyone Prabhu. Likewise, Bhagwan word can be used. But this Param Satyam Paramadhyamai, absolute truth, is used only for the supreme absolute truth. Is a word that defines only Krishna and nobody else. So, um, very important verse. This is the beginning of Bhagavatam. Vyasadeva clarifies who Bhagwan is how he is the source, how he is aware directly, indirectly of everything, how he is supremely independent, how he is the one who gave knowledge to Brahma, how by his illusory energy the great sages and demigods are illusioned, how, how his creation, material creation, is covered by the three modes and is illusory. All the desires in this creation are illusory. Why? Because they are driven by the three modes. I want to eat this, I want to go there, I want to enjoy that. All the desires are created by three modes and that's how everything that is happening and taking place here is illusion. Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Thakur says, only two things are real in this world and everything is illusion. And he says, one is Krishna Nam and one is Vaishnavas. And naturally, uh, Shiva and Bhagavatam is also there. Um, Saraswati Thakur says about Sriman Bhagavatam, if the entire universe is destroyed, 
but if just bhagavatam remains from bhagavatam the entire creation can take place again bhagavatam is complete in itself he says if the entire universe is lost but if bhagavatam remains nothing is lost but if universe is there bhagavatam is lost and our universe is lost that's what will happen as kali yuga progresses bhagavatam will go away bhagavatam will disappear so everything in this material world is illusory but the abode of the lord is always always forever free from the illusory potency and he is the supreme absolute truth and i offer my respectful obeisances unto him all right so that was um that was a beginning of what is shrimad bhagavata and the beginning of shrimad bhagavata so how are we doing now are there any discussions on this verse or in general about the history of bhagavata and then i will contemplate more on how to give an overview without going in great depth at the same time covering the important details important prayers um, important uh, um, like more details of important chapters like jyot sushiman bhagavatam and some of them going a little bit faster but have a more deeper appreciation and understanding of shiman bhagavatam all right so would anybody like to say anything ask any questions hari krishna prabhu ji mata ji hari krishna dhanvat pranam dhanvat pranam prabhu ji uh, when uh, parikshit maharaj was uh, uh, cursed uh, by rishi putra uh, yeah he like uh, he gave up all his duties and uh, before coming to the uh ganges like he, he was uh, he was not aware that he is going to meet uh, sukhdev go swami and he will be like uh, he will get the knowledge of bhagavatam right yes so his intention was like he, he was searching the su- supreme truth in the last 7 days uh, what was I, i would like to know like what was his intention when he was uh, out of the kingdom and going to ganges thank you he knew krishna is god okay but he wants to hear the glories of the lord and he wants to take shelter of the saints mm-hmm. he want to attain perfection in his life he wants to ask the saints be in their presence and ask them so i know god is krishna what should i do now i have seven days how can i make the best use of my time and the best use of the time the answer for him was by hearing shrimad bhagavatam it is described anybody who hears shrimad bhagavatam once does not take birth again once hearing of shrimad bhagavatam he don't know how he is going to spend the time but krishna used him to for shrimad bhagavatam to descend through him as a via medium All right. Sure, Prabhu ji. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone has anything else? Prabhu ji, I am saying for thank you so much, Prabhu ji, for your uh, Bhagavatam class. And this is Prabhu ji. I I come to the Krishna consciousness for two thousand sixteen, but I don't want to be regularly, you know, canto by canto. to heard the you know uh, katha and then like you kind of uh, you know pujari share to the correct way how to you know learn and grow in bhakti so just what i say thank you prabhu ji thank you thank you thank you so much prabhu ji please prabhu ji continue and i pray to the krishna and radha rani ki your help and everything is going good so you done all the cantors prabhu ji and we heard with your mouth <laughs> thank you you're welcome much grateful to you thank you for your blessing yes sir all right is there anybody else has anything to ask or add um okay i'm grateful to all of you for 
this opportunity and for joining and for giving all of us, myself including and everyone here, a chance to discuss Shrimad Bhagavata, mm -hmm. which is, this is Bhagavata. So we are very, I'm very, I'm very much eager and looking forward now to these discussions just because the subject matter is Bhagavata. Um, okay. Thank you very much. One Shakalpa Tadubesha, Kripas in Dube Evacha, Patitana, Pavane Pio, Vaishnave Pio, Namanama, Anantakoti, Vaishnavenda Kija, Shila Prabhupada Kija, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prabhupada. Thank you, 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 Prabh